If you've got a camera like this with a lens that won't allow you to get as close as you want to your subject for that perfect crisp macro shot like this, then these extension tubes could be your budget answer. So you bought a new camera, maybe spent a little bit more on the lens, then bought another lens. Hands up if that sounds like you. Now picture the scenario, you're out shooting and there's something you really wanna get close to. Maybe it's a flower or an insect, but the problem is that focal distance of a lens won't allow you to get near your subject without zooming in and potentially losing some of that clarity. What do you do? Just get a normal photo? Well, with the help of these extension tubes, you'll be able to get those macro shots and all without spending loads of money on a dedicated macro lens. In this video, I'll be using the 16 to 50 millimeter lens on my Sony ZV-10, just to show you that even with the most basic lens, you'll be able to get those amazing macro shots. If we look at the front of the 16 to 50 millimeter lens, you can see the 0.25 meters or 0.82 foot. This refers to the minimum focusing distance of this lens. So basically any object closer than 0.25 meters can't be focused by this lens and that's our problem. With these hollow extension tubes, this one in particular comes in extensions of 10 millimeters and 16 meters that can be combined for a combined extension of 26 millimeters or used separately are compatible with e-mount cameras like the ZV-10 and or e-mount lenses. The good news is whatever type of camera that you've got, whether it's an e-mount lens or a different type of lens from a different manufacturer, you'll be able to find extension tubes to fit your camera mount type. The extension tube is made mainly out of plastic but on this one the camera and lens mount sections are made out of metal. Not all extension tubes come with the electrical contacts like this which allow for full control of the lenses from the camera body but without these contacts you may as well be using a manual lens which wouldn't work well for a power zoom lens like this 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens but would work well with something that's like a manual zoom lens. As their name suggests, these extension tubes extend the normal distance of the lens to the camera sensor by sitting in between the two and effectively giving the lens increased magnification and alas, our gateway into macro photography. Essentially, the further the lens is away from the camera, the closer you can get to your object. But there are drawbacks, which I will talk about later. Having two extension tubes like the 10 millimeter and the 16 millimeter, you'll find yourself experimenting with the two sizes, which one's better on certain lenses. But with practice and experience, you'll find your preferred tube to use for your shot that provides the adequate closeness. Let's go and see these extension tubes in action with a few shots I took earlier today. Good reasons to use extension tubes like these, the main one being the price that you'll pay for these instead of a dedicated macro lens. But certainly though, if you're serious about macro photography and it's more than just uh, once in a while when something catches your eye thing, then investing in a macro lens may be the best way to go in the long term. Your camera bag is certainly going to thank you when you're putting these lightweight space saving accessories in there instead of that big bulky macro lens. And don't forget, these are compatible with all of your lenses, giving you room for more and other accessories. With the positives, there are negatives though, because you're effectively adding a sort of tunnel to your camera and lens setup. You're going to increase the aperture by decreasing the amount of light that can reach your camera sensor. So when taking macro shots with extension tubes, you should take this into account and try and shoot with as much light as practically possible and suitable for your shot. And to get those crisp shots, you should also try mounting your camera on a tripod or having it on a stationary surface. Because extension tubes are only best used for close-up macro photography, and at the most mid-range photography, you will in most instances be able to take shots and focus on anything at infinity, essentially because the lens will be unable to focus on it. Remember what having an extension tube does for objects at the nearest distance. It brings the focal distance nearer to the lens, allowing you to get closer to the subject. So at the furthest distance, it also does the same thing. 
Not really a negative, but something to think about if you do take a variety of shots. With these two extension tubes and the 16 to 50 millimeter lens, I find that the 10 millimeter extension tube provides my shots with an adequate closeness that I'm happy with. And if I don't want to get too close, there's always the option of zooming in and out, which gives that added control with the extension tubes are on. But I prefer my macro shots to be at the widest angle. The 16 millimeter, although really good at getting really close to your subject, when it's on this lens, it gets way too close to the subject. And certainly with both extension tubes combined, any shot is just unusable. But that's just with this 16 to 50 millimeter lens. My other lens, the 55 to 210 millimeter zoom lens, having both extension tubes on drastically brought this focusing distance in, turning a lens that I rarely ever use in this small room into a lens that I'd be very comfortable shooting macro subjects with. And with that manual zoom control, giving you that precise focusing. So. That's extension tubes. Ideal if you're looking for a budget way of taking macro photography shots and you don't want to make a purchase of an expensive dedicated macro lens at the moment. And even if you are just holding off on that purchase, just remember the advantages and disadvantages of having these on any lens in your kit bag. I'll leave a link to these macro lens in particular in the description below, but remember most tubes will do exactly the same thing. The difference with these are those electrical contacts to allow the continued use of non-manual lenses through the camera controls, but having this control can add to the price. So make that choice based on which lenses you'll be using the extension tubes on. I mainly use the extension tube on my 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, so tubes with contacts are the best for my usage, but I can still use them on my manual lens which doesn't have any electrical context anyway. So if you still want camera operated aperture and autofocus control, I choose extension tubes like these. Let me know in the comments below whether having extension tubes in your setup would benefit your workflow. And if you're already using them, what's the photo you're most proud of taking them with them attached? This is my entry as somewhat of a novice photographer who's always improving thanks to accessories like these. I, I like it. Press the like button if you enjoyed this video and make sure to press that subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.